Welcome to the Rock Coding YouTube channel. My name is Anton and today I want to share a technique or a style of thinking that I have adapted from functional programming that I don't see many people use or basically even capable of it. So I recently released a video about building a JSON parser using functional programming and the video is an hour long. So most people don't have an hour of attention span. So I thought, let me release this video. So you may program like a 10x engineer as well. So, uh, do, I, do I think I'm a 10x engineer? Uh, that's not important. If you're enjoying the video, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments section. And I have a C-sharp course that is out. If you would like to know C-sharp as I do, I highly recommend you take a look at it. With that, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the problem here is going to be relatively simple. We have a graph of vectors, just a bunch of x, y, z coordinates. They don't draw anything. We just fill this up. And the question that we have here is the endpoint is trying to query this. All right. So currently everything is super simple. We have our x, y, z. If we have it, we're trying to match. Uh, the application is running. If I go over here, everything, well, <laughs> everything is running. Let's say I want to see x where it's 60 and we got a couple of coordinates. So th this may be a little bit useless because maybe what you want to say is less than more than and uh, these signs may be a little bit uncomfortable to work with. So maybe we want to say L or G for less uh, than or greater than and then we can also add less than or greater than or equals. First of all, if we want to put letters in our arguments, we can no longer have integers. We are going to have to have strings. And another thing that you cannot do that is very restrictive in C sharp is you can't say, let me take this comparison operator and store it in a variable. And then maybe on some condition, I want to resolve resolve a different comparison and maybe do something like this. Well, uh, not that you cannot, you can if you want to go to <laughs> not exception, but let's say uh, expressions and then equals, but then you have to work with expressions. And maybe you want to do that. Maybe you don't want to do that. So where do you go from here? You want to say that, well, if X in the first position, let's say for equals, we'll just have E where we'll try to execute this query like this. And then we'll do int parse. And we'll have to do it for the rest of the parameters. And then we're going to have to repeat this. So let's type this out. So the condition now looks something like this. We will uh, grab this, uh, place this over here and replace everything. So all the x's to y's and all the big x's to big y's. And same for the z over here. All the x's to z and all the big x's to big z's. Uh, there we have it. The application should hopefully restart. Let's say we want something like x equals five, though we didn't have that. Let's say less than five. What about equals five? And what about greater than five? Cool. So this seems to be working. Looking at this, we can say that <laughs> this is not optimal, right? That is not good. Uh, how do we go about fixing it? So this is where uh, the basically the technique is and uh, the point about it is being able to see the essence in this whole function over here. What are the actual things that are changing and how can you extract the abstraction? And if you've been paying attention, it is primarily these two points. We want to say something along the lines of if E we want to evaluate to equals, if we have L, we want to evaluate to less than. And if we have G, we want to evaluate to more than. Specifically, here we have something like VX, and then we're going to have X over here. V is going to have to come from somewhere. So perhaps we will supply it as a parameter. And for all of these parameters, it looks like we're going to have to change this V to be y or to be z. So we see this explosion happening over here. So we'll comment it out and we see that there is also some repetition over here. Uh, let's first take a look at this x. We need this x to come from somewhere. Since this is the value that is going to be coming in at essentially runtime, here we're thinking of what can we construct at compile time. And really, the only way that I can try to summarize this technique is you're writing an application that is going to write an application for when you're actually running. 
Okay, so this will try to sit in the innermost lambda. On the outside, let's go ahead, place the X, and we'll have something like this. So this is the approximate shape that we have. If we take something like this and we will try to assign it to a function where the input is going to be our vector 3D and we are going to try to output a Boolean. So this is a vector comparison, comparison. Paste this over here and we have V, which is going to be the vector and then the X, which maybe has to be equal, maybe has to be something else, but it is coming from the outside. If I just slap the X on here and instead I will say create vector comparison, the X, let's say, will come from somewhere over here and it will be an actual integer which you can compare. This function becomes a function which creates another function. I can give it a body or I can say that it evaluates to another function and now this compiles as well. And because we're going to have uh, something along the lines of less than and greater than, let's say we will have equal, uh, less and greater. I'm going to skip uh, the greater than and less than part, just have less and greater. These as functions can actually just get assigned over here now as something that we evaluate to. Just put the greater on the end here. For whatever string value we're getting, we want to spit out one of these conditions. The type for this condition is going to be this. Well, we'll say create condition based on some kind of string. This is going to be a value and then we will just evaluate this value using a switch case expression. Place this over here and now instead of the semicolons here, we can place commas. For the actual comparison, we can use a range comparison. In the first position, we will have E and then there is going to be the rest, which I believe we say something like this. So double equals rest and then this is going to be the rest of the string, which we can then do int parse on. I repeat the same thing here. So less than, greater than. And we have to do the parsing on the end here. So let's invoke int parse and then for the rest semicolon on the end here for the rest of the handles uh, let's say that this is a not supported exception for this value all right we can now take create condition slap this on somewhere over here and just pass the x down here and we get rid of all of these if statements but one thing that we haven't handled yet is the variation between z x and y so let's change this up like this and now do the same create condition but for y and z if we blindly let's say just take about yay much say here we'll create x comparison here it will be y comparison and here it will be z comparison fix the rest of this up uh, the x parameter uh, we're not going to fix it up because it is just a value and actually what we can do is just say that it is going to be some kind of number what we have to do then is grab this function replace all of this here and uh, clearly don't close your window this will now be create x condition and we're going to have the same for y and z so this is going to be y and this is going to be z if we go to the next error so z y and or sorry x y and z and there we have it so more or less clean on this side however on this side we still have quite a bit of repetition we did add functions uh, here and there but things are generally more or less very repetitive uh, let's get rid of this comment uh, let's double check that things are working so if i give this a refresh greater than still works uh, less than five uh, that looks good to me and if we equal five that looks good to me as well we can do a little bit better here what is essentially the source of all of this repetition if we take a look vector x vector y vector z vector x vector y vector z all for this selector. So let's isolate this selector. We will have a func uh, where we will accept a vector and we're going to return a value. So x 
select this is going to equal to some kind of vector that will evaluate to a property. We will repeat this for y and then z. So evaluate to v y and v z. Now if we take these selectors and let's actually slap them at the top over here because they're kind of primitives that we want to work at so they should come before we actually consume them. If we take x select and we try to just put it into this condition where vector x, if we just slap this on here, we should be getting some kind of vector in here, although we are not sure where the vector should come from here before the vector actually came from here from this function. So this is what you do. You just say, I want a vector, it should come in. And from the vector, I'm going to select this property. For the equals comparison, I'm going to compare it to this value here that I was parsing. Let's get rid of this and we end up with something like this. So if I take this, uh, replace this and this, we are going to say that this property is less than and the X is more than. Cutting the exercise a little bit short, if we essentially do the same thing here where we're saying uh, replace the X select with Y select, we now see a repetition and the next thing that we want to lift out is this selector, which is really this function. So this function becomes a parameter and instead of creating X, Y conditions, we are creating a condition. The function that we're creating is going to be func of string and then that is going to in turn construct us another function. The parameter that we have over here is this function of vector int which is the ord selector. For clarity I will give this a body. We're going to return the work that was being performed over here. The value can still be the string value over here and sorry not var val format this and now for the selector we can actually just replace this with chord selector. From here we can actually remove all of this, uh, remove all of this as well and for create x condition, y condition let's select all of the where's just like that. Select this condition, place these over here. Uh, these can be variables if I format this correctly so var lower c equals create condition. The parameters should be select and then the first one is x and y or something like that. So y, z over here, semicolons on the end. And I would take create x condition, place this over here, create y condition, place this over here, create a z condition, place this over here. And we should be at more or less the same situation. Perhaps we can make this a lot simpler now that we understand the problem by just supplying the selectors over here and getting rid of these parameters. Perhaps we can even do this over here if you want it or if you want a variable that you can reuse or you know a static field that you can grab this from, you can also have that. The application should be restarted. Uh, let's go ahead and give this a whirl. So equals five, that looks to be working. Let's say less than five. And we will also select Y is, let's say, greater than 10. Uh, that looks to be working. Maybe a little bit better search will be less than 10. Maybe what if we say equals 9 and Z, uh, there is only one coordinate. But hopefully you get the picture. Now we get a query where the real achievement that we have over here is if we want to add an additional operation to this que these query parameters, uh, this is now supported very easily. Now, what if our model grows? So there is going to be an additional coordinate like A, B, C or W or something like that. What would that look like? We would have to add a coordinate over here. We would have to add another if statement. We would have to create another function. So we have scalability in one place, but we don't have scalability in another place. In the next video, we're going to be exploring what we need to do in order to achieve scalability for our data model and still have that 
godlike query potential. But this will be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section. Don't forget to check out the description. And if you want the source code for this video as well as my other videos, please come support me on Patreon. I will be very happy and a very big and special thank you goes out to all of my current Patreon supporters. You help me make these videos. As always, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.